the Lord. Okay, so I'm sure you are ready to, uh, looking forward to uh, hearing the word. And so, uh, praise God. Are we ready to receive the word? Amen. Amen. Let's uh, give a warm welcome to our President, Pastor Dave. Ah, wonderful to be back here. Amen. I told uh, Sister Kina, I said, next year we should try to go with the ladies to the Blessing Geneva instead of the Blessing. And I think that will happen. I think that will, uh, yeah, a lot of ladies here, so it, uh, it can happen. Regina says hello, the children say hello, John, everybody says hello from Holland. So uh, we are joined in the spirit together, and I'm so happy that on Eastern Day I can be here. Eastern Day, it's a wonderful day. It's the day that the Lord has made, it's a, it's a joyful day, and I hope you are happy to be in the house of the Lord, because in the house of the Lord is better than anywhere else. And that's where you are. And I want to share the message. Well, I leave this afternoon again because tomorrow in Holland we have two Eastern days. I think we are the only country in the world that has two Eastern days, two Pentecost days, and two Christmas days. And that says something about Christianity in the country, you know. But it's not like that no more. But we are still celebrating and, celebrating and take the second day as our day of the Lord. So tomorrow we we'll be in the city of Utrecht. And then all the blessing churches of Holland, they come together. It will be full there. We will have a joyful day. And I will sound the jubilee trumpet. trumpet. The jubilee breakthrough trumpet. And you will hear about this in the near future. Because the blessing Geneva is also in this jubilee breakthrough blessing. Amen. Believe this year will be your jubilee breakthrough blessing Amen. for the miracles that you need. And I also told uh, Brother Bonas Israeli, I said, let's believe within five years. With five years for me too long, but then at least I have... Uh, uh, quite some time. Let's believe for the blessing Geneva. We will have our own place. Between five years. Let's believe for that. Let's believe we need it sooner. But at least we give five years. I say, Lord, you need a lot of time, five years, but I know you can work very quick. So it just depends how the Lord works. But let's believe that this is the Jubal breakthrough year for the blessing Geneva, but also for you personally. Amen. That's all I'm going to speak about tomorrow, but not today. I have another message today, and then afterwards, I think we eat a little, and then I still have time to maybe sit together for those that have time and answer questions or whatever the Lord leads us uh, to do, okay? It's wonderful to see all the faces that I know, the beautiful faces. <laughs> Who is new here that I didn't see yet? Who is new? You are new. Oh, and you are new. Wonderful to have you here. I'm going to share something out of the Word today of uh, my heart and what the Holy Spirit gives me. And Regina and I, will we will be back, maybe sooner, but at least we will be back uh, with the camp days in August. And I ask, you don't know yet, but uh, I ask... I feel we should have the theme, the Holy Spirit. So the theme, we will work around the Holy Spirit. And I have a lot to say about the Holy Spirit. Uh, I'm not ashamed to call this a Pentecost church. That's the difference between a lot of churches and this church. It's a Pentecost church where the power of God works through the Holy Spirit. Lord. Amen. I'm glad you say praise the Lord. Amen. Yeah, because I'm not ashamed to call us that way. Yeah, there will be some who, who, who do this, you know. But we, be, we, we believe that the Holy Spirit will do some special things here. That's why I like to have the theme of the Camp Week, the Holy Spirit. And I hope everybody will come with us and be with us those few days that we are together. We will share a lot of things together. But uh, 
Did I give greetings? I have so much to say, but I, I, I only have so much time, so I want to share the word. But I have so much to say what God is doing in the work and around the world and in Holland. But you, we will let you know along the way, okay? But believe for yourself that this is the breakthrough, the blessing breakthrough jubilee year for yourself and the church. But I want to speak also today about the Holy Spirit and the body of Christ. And I want to read something of 1st Corinth chapter 12. 1st Corinth chapter 12. Um, and then I read verse 12 and 13. Okay, it's maybe something you know, uh, uh, you have read before, but I'm going to share something that you maybe don't know. Or, as you hear it, you can only say amen uh, on it, because, well, let me share it. Verse 12. For even as the body is one, and yet has many members... And all the members of the body, though they are many, are one body. One body. Many members, one body. So also Christ, for by one Spirit we were all baptized. Remember, for by one Spirit, one Spirit, the Holy Spirit, we were all baptized into one body. All baptized into one body. Whether Jews, Greeks, whether saved, slave, free, and we are all made to drink of one Spirit. First, uh, 13. Okay, I already read that. Now, the Bible teaches us that the church is the body of Jesus Christ. Okay? At least you can say amen on that. <laughs> it's not difficult to understand. And you know my messages are always very easy for anyone to understand. Even children can understand me. That's my power. <laughs> the Bible teaches us that the church is the body of Christ... And that the Holy Spirit is the life in that body, in that church. That's why I call ourselves a Pentecost church. The Holy Spirit is a person. It's not a thing. Jesus talks about, when he talks about him, he says he. And about a thing, you don't say he. The Holy Spirit is a person. And he controls the body. He is the life in the body. He controls the body. He is the one who keeps it together. He is the one who harmonizes it. He is the one who binds the body with the head. Jesus Christ is the head, the Bible says. So he is the one that binds the body with the head, the church with Jesus Christ. And he he closes, he clothed the body with power from on high. That's why I call ourselves a Pentecost church, because there is power in the Pentecost church to perform miracles and do whatever God wants us to do. So the body is effective to do what God wants it to do. That's why we need that Holy Spirit. So that the body will be effective in doing the thing that God wants the body to do. So the church will be effective to do what God wants us to do. It says in 1 Corinthians 12, verse 12 and 13, For even as the body is one and yet has many members, and all the members of that body, though they are many, are one body, so also is Christ. For by one Spirit we were all baptized into one body. It means that the Holy Spirit is putting it together, the church, bringing it together. 
he he brings it into one body he unites it he assembles it he unites it it means that the church is no organization the church is no institute and you know what an organization and an institute is because you live in a city with a lot of organizations and a lot of institutes big uh, international institutes are right here in Geneva so you know what an institute and an organization is and the body the church is not an organization it's not an institute but then what is it well it's a living body it's a living organ formed assembled and brought together by the Holy Spirit himself and it's united with the head Jesus Christ to say it in another way Eve Adam and Eve Eve was made was created in the body of Adam in Adam you know this Eve was in Adam when Adam was created Eve was in there and by a godly uh, uh, by a godly if God does something you know how you say that by a godly performing by a godly performing the Holy Spirit God took Eve out of the body of Adam and then when she was formed, God brought Eve back to Adam to be his wife. In the church, the church, it's the same thing. The church is born out of Christ. And God brought it back to Christ when it was created to be a bride before him. He is a bridegroom, so he brought us back to him and we wait till the moment till we meet him and be forever with him and be married with him Amen. in another sort of speech you know every human body every person here let's welcome that person into church it's a person I don't know let's welcome him welcome uh, is everybody on time here Remember? Remember? I don't mean you. I don't mean you. But you're from Africa? Uh, which country? Nigeria. Well, Africans sometimes are a little late. And he knows, or rather not, but Philippines are always on time. Well, don't be proud of it that you are late. Because we agree to be on time in church. And I hope everybody's working. Be in church a quarter past ten. All right? Remember, do your best. But every person that comes to believing in Jesus Christ will, by the Holy Spirit, will be assembled, be united in the body of Christ. If you come to Christ, you give your life to Christ, the Holy Spirit will unite you with that body. And only the Holy Spirit can do this. Uh, people cannot do this. Man cannot do this. This is a godly work. It means you can put people together as an organization as a group but that doesn't mean that group that bunch of people is the church of Christ anyone can put a group of, group of people together you can put a name above that group uh, a, a nice nice beautiful name church so-and-so and and, -so, and, uh, and uh, I don't know uh, Calvary's uh, uh, have a nice Christian name above that group or door it doesn't mean that that group is the church and the body of Christ 
it's a group of people that come together. They can maybe sing uh, uh, nice songs, uh, worship songs, and they can pray. Even the message can be there. It can even speak about Jesus Christ. But it doesn't necessarily mean that that group of people is the body of Christ. That that group of people is the church. It makes them a group. It makes them an organized group of people by organized by a human being, by, by, by people. It doesn't mean it's the body of Christ. The uniting, the assembling of the different parts, persons, of people that come to Christ, the, the forming, the binding together, the assembling together to a church, to the body of Christ, is a godly work that can only be done by the Holy Spirit and not a human being. That's a very big difference. Between, between one group that comes together and another group that comes together. And for those who understand this, what I'm trying to explain this morning, I want to go a little deeper. The forming, the assembling, the uniting of the parts, body parts, the members, to a body, to a church, the Bible calls it baptism. Do I say right baptism? The Bible calls that baptism. And, and many don't understand this. That's why you need the Holy Ghost. Many don't understand this. And I pray that the Holy Spirit will open the eyes of the heart to understand what God is saying to them. It will change your mind about things. It will change your mind about people that come together. It will change your mind about some so-called Christian that come to church. And I will explain. And I'm always very straight, you know about me. Always uh, very straight telling the truth. It is called baptism. And this baptism that we speak about this morning, it's not the baptism of underwater. Uh, that's a testimony of it. No, it is the baptism of death and resurrection of our own I, our own self. There is a baptism when you come to Christ that you die with Christ and you rise with Christ. It's the death and resurrection of your own I, your own will, you. You need to die before you can get alive in Christ. That's why we needed to have Friday, Good Friday. You know, on Friday I spoke in uh, the Blessington Hague and I was already in that Eastern mode and in the Pentecost mode. But I said, people, we cannot go there unless we go through Calvary, unless we go to Good Friday. There is no Eastern, there is no Pentecost without Good Friday. There is no new life unless you die first. Only the life of Christ can arise out of death, of your own death. Unless you die, there can be no new life of Christ within you. So it is the baptism in death of your own eye and the resurrection of Jesus Christ within you, which makes you a Christian, which makes you a born again faith believer Christian and only those the Holy Spirit can join and unite in the body of Christ he cannot unite your own eye in there your own eye needs to die and the life of Christ within you which will say not I that live but Christ lives within me joins in the body of Christ and makes the true church of Jesus Christ here on earth and the greatest curse for the church today is all the flesh thinking unholy so-called Christian and Christian leaders that is assembled or united within the church. That's the curse today. 
because there are a lot of flesh leaders and flesh thinking Christians which didn't die of their own eye and they still live themselves so strongly that are with that are out of her of their flesh thoughts and minds bringing in things within the church that is not of God it comes out of the flesh and not out of the spirit and the greatest need of the church today is to be baptized into death and resurrection of Jesus Christ within the lives of man that joins the church that's the greatest need that's what we need when we bring people into church we want them to die themselves and to rise in the name of Jesus Christ so the life of Christ will be within them and only then they can be joined into the body of Jesus Christ into the church ah well, and only the Holy Spirit can do that. No man can do that. We can try to bring in people and join them and say this is the church, but that's not true. That's, that's a group of people. It's not the body of Christ. There is a change between the body of Christ and a group of people. Number two, the Holy Spirit carries the body. So the first thing is the Holy Spirit joins, unites the body. The Holy Spirit, the second thing is the Holy Spirit carries the body. The Bible says, how does it say here in the English one? We were all made to drink of one spirit. Read it yourself. We were all made to drink of one spirit. It is one thing to be baptized into the body of Christ. It is another thing to drink out of the ocean of water within you will be baptized. Those are two different things. It means when you joined by the Holy Spirit into the true body of Jesus Christ, into the church, there will be, it is unmistakable true, there will be from out the Holy Spirit within you a very longing to Jesus Christ, your Savior, your bridegroom. In Him we live, in Him we move, in Him is our being. With other words, a bird lives in, in the sky, a fish lives in the water, and we can only live through the Holy Spirit. There's no other way we can live as a true Christian. Born again Christian. Who died and rise with Jesus Christ. This is the big secret of the baptism in the Holy Spirit. That's why I like to have the team of the Holy Spirit. with. There's so much to say about it. This is the big secret of a fruitful life in Jesus Christ within the church. This is where you see who is fruitful, who is not fruitful. And that's why I had the question, are you baptized with the Holy Spirit? Because only then you can bear much fruit and the Father will be glorified in you. Did the Holy Spirit brought you to a point in your life where you hunger? And when you thirst, that you don't want anything else, you long for the love of Jesus Christ within you. You long for it. You, you, you cannot live without it. You cannot think. You, you, you go to bed with it. You, you wake up with it, with the, with the longing and the desire for your bridegroom, Jesus Christ. Maybe you have prayed for that. Well... If you did, maybe the Lord can use sometimes very orth unorthodox matters and meanings and, and things to bring you to that point. Number three, the Holy Spirit binds us together to one body. So the, the, 
the Holy Spirit assembles you, binds you, joins you together to one body. The body of Christ is a unity, is, is one, is a unity. It is one body. It's not two bodies. It's not five bodies. It's not ten or a hundred bodies. It's one body. Maybe you understand this better in the next point. As I speak about the Holy Spirit joins us together and with Christ. You see, some don't understand what I'm saying. But even in a group, even in the true church of Christ, there are members, there are people who don't belong to the true church of Christ. Not everybody is assembled and joined into the body of Christ. Only those who died of their own self, who are baptized in the death and the resurrection of Jesus Christ, is the true body. Because if you didn't die and you live yourself, how can the Holy Spirit join you into the body of Christ? It means you. there will be, sometimes there are groups that don't belong at all to the body of Christ. Sometimes there are groups and there are members who join the body of Christ, but within a group there are members that are not. You understand it? Because not everybody is a born again Christian, died themselves, and not is resurrection. So it means that you cannot say of a group of people that's the church. That's why I speak about the true church and not the true church. Because the devil has a church too. And if you come in, uh, in the week of October, I will speak about fake Holy Spirits. And I will speak about fake, a fake church. Because you have, the, you have the truth, you have the real thing, but you also have a lot of fake. And only the Holy Spirit knows the difference between the truth and the fake. The truth and the lie. So it doesn't mean that in a group of people, everybody is a church. It's only the Holy Spirit that joins us together and with Christ as one body. It means he puts us together under the head, Jesus Christ. He puts us together, together. Which members he puts together? Only those that are baptized in the death and resurrection of Christ. Those are put together as one body of Christ. And it's up to you if you join in that body or not, if you are in that body or not. Maybe you come to a group of people and you are not a member of the true body of Christ. You are just a member of yourself because your own eye lives and not Christ lives in you. <coughs> So he puts us together with him. Every individual member of the church of Jesus Christ who is dead and resurrected in Jesus is linked to the source of life, Jesus Christ himself. At the first place. You as a member, as a true member, you who are baptized in the death and resurrection of Christ, you have your life source from himself, Jesus Christ. That's why you can also uh, survive without any other members around you. That's what you should. But you see, well, I don't know if I can say many, but today many won't survive if they are on their own. They always need the others. But when you are connected with the source of life himself, Jesus Christ, who is your head, in which you live, in which you move, in which your life is, in which you are baptized and resurrected, you can, you can survive on your own. And maybe those moments will come in the future when the persecution comes and everybody will be scattered. And you need to be on your own. Remember those messages that God gave you. You can survive. You can survive with your wife or with your husband and your children on your own. You can as long as he is with you. 
as long as you stay in him, he in you, you in him, and together in the Father. Hallelujah. Only the Holy Spirit can do that. Amen. Beautiful message. Mm. I like it myself, you know. <laughs> yeah, I speak to myself too. I eat my own message. If not, then I cannot preach that way. I'm, a, I'm on fire for Jesus. That's why I can say I will sound, uh, I'm going to speak about that another time. <laughs> Together we form the body of Christ. Amen. And Jesus Christ is our head. Amen. The head needs the body and the body needs the head. We cannot survive without the head. We need the head and he needs the body. What is the head without the body? What is the body without the head? It would be the strange thing. <laughs> and, it, and when you are a doctor, you, you really know that. If you only have the body and no head, it cannot. <laughs> or only if you only see my head here. It's a strange thing. Head, the head is in the heaven. Jesus is in heaven. The head is in the heaven. And the body, who we are the body, are on earth. And on earth... We represent God's being in heaven. Amen. We, as true body of Christ, we represent the head Jesus Christ in holiness, in power, in uh, love, in uh, obedience, in justification, in word, in deed, and everything. We represent Him here on earth. Amen. Number five, the Holy Spirit unites and keeps the body together okay he unites it but he also keeps it together you understand this he unites it but he also keeps it together it's his body i i just told brother bong this morning uh, even and i tell many times the leaders and 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 usually i mention these things uh, because I know then when God is blessing and, and he is using members or he's using the pastors or leaders and the body is being blessed and, and, there's, and there are miracles and, and, and blessings, then uh, uh, I'm always praying that, that, the, that the leaders will stay humble. Because when, when you have wind in the sails, then leaders and, and members that God is using will uh, quickly exalt, you know. Oh, that's my doing. It's, my, it's because I am good in preaching or singing or whatever. But that's not true. It's the, it's the favor. It's the mercy of God. It is, that's what I tell the leaders. It's His body. Amen. His work. And that sounds, that's the same for me. I've been raised that way. My father was that way. We have been through such uh, roads of, of uh, valleys. Um, God has brought us through before we became leaders. Why God did that? Because David needed to die before God could use me as a leader. If I didn't die and I would still be the same, then my eye would grow and explode in pride and in uh, uh, pride. You know, everything is pride. So it needs to die in order to do what God wants it to do. And when it's blessed and exalted, it will not exalt. It will give all the glory and honor to him because it's dead. A dead body you can kick, it doesn't say anything. If it is alive, you will hear it. And we need to die. And that's the difference between one member and another member in the same group of people, which we call church. The Holy Spirit doesn't only unite it, it keeps it together. It's His body, His church, His members, His sheep. The blessing church is it's His. Jesus Christ is the head. Yes, he, he put leaders upon the church, the Bible speaks about. But it's his. It's never ours. If, 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 if God would take away uh, Brother Bong and Sister Rowe to go somewhere else, you cannot say no like you own them. I'm not going to take them away. <laughs> but 
if he would. Many times God cannot do what he wants because the members, they, they own the leader, they own the, the shepherds. The sheep don't own the shepherds and the shepherds don't own the sheep. God can move as he wants. And when we all are dead and resurrected in Christ, we all will be united. And God keeps us united. It means if there is a body part in the body that is sick, if there is a member in the body that is sick, then it weakens the whole body. You hear this? If one member is sick, or even more members, usually if one member is sick, there are parts in the body, and a doctor would know it, that, be, that come sick too. If that is not cut away, or if it is not cured, or if it is not taken away. If you have one rotten apple among apples, then the apples become all rotten. And it means if one member of the body is sick it weakens the whole body my uh, son john henry he plays football in the, in a team and and not because he is my son but he is one of the better ones of the team and so they all uh, they all well they don't rest on they don't um, they all want him to be in the in the team because he creates open ways so they can score and they can win. So they, they, they love him and want him. When they play, they want him in the team. But uh, a few weeks ago, he broke his ankle. And, uh, well, uh, it's okay. For me, it's okay. Because then I say, Regina, this is of the Lord. So the Lord can take care of him when he lays down and cannot go to his football team, then the Lord can speak to him. <laughs> you know, as a father I say this. <laughs> Only as a father. Who loves his son and wants his son to follow the footsteps of the Lord. And he is young, he's 21 or 22, but I know he is called, he has a calling, and he is, he is young, so he has to go through the same things as you and I do. And in those... Uh, well, I'm not, uh, I'm not uh, saying Hosanna and Hallelujah when he goes to his football team, but he's young, so we let him go. But we also <laughs> want him to hear of the Lord. But when he is in his football team, then the voice is maybe not so clear. Now he is laying in bed, then the voice of the God can. <laughs> now don't tell the him that I told you. <laughs> oh, it's that <laughs> Okay, John, here's Daddy, he loves you, and he wants you to be a leader among churches. Yeah. But, but, that, that's what I was explaining, he, it, it, he had, how do you call that? Yeah. No, 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 uh, the heart, hips. Casket. Yeah, yeah. Cash. 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 That's that's that hard thing around, you know. It's already going better, so it, uh, it's gone today. But uh, he still needs to slow be uh, becoming strong again. But when he had that cast the past weeks, he could not play. And I used that in, in Holland, and I said, because of that, he weakens the whole team. You understand? Yes. Because he broke his ankle, he can't play, and that weakens the whole team, and they lose. Oh. Well, I don't care if they lose. <laughs> <laughs> Because you said, oh. <laughs> well, it means you understand. Yes. If one member of the body of Christ, of the true body of Christ, is sick, it weakens the whole body. God cannot do what he wants to do through the whole body if one member is sick while the body is weakened. And then... It, 
what could have what could God have done if the whole body would have been strong? Not a weak member. Everybody works and assembles. You have a hand that's working. You have a feet that's working. I have legs. I'm glad I have legs this morning. I I I, I uh, drove away at five o'clock from my home. I have legs. That's why I'm here. That's why I'm quick here and quick on. <laughs> yeah. That's why I can be quick. It's it's healthy. It's strong. My legs work. My hands work. That's why I can do with this body many things. Encourage you. And you can encourage others. But if one part, if I would have one leg, I would have had a problem. If I had no legs, I would have really had a problem. It weakens the whole body. What God could have done if the whole body is strong and united. Maybe now you understand with this message what a sin it is if you are the, the, the source of the weakening of the body. If you are the, the guilty one, the, the, the source. It is a sin. And and listen, I'm not I'm not talking about a sickness. If you are if you are sick, you, you cannot join because then what what you need is prayer and anoint with oil and, and we pray as body for you that you will be resurrected from your 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 sickness. No, I am talking that you are the source of dividing the body. If you are the source by dividing the body because you leave your post, your, your, your uh, post, your, your ministry. You have a ministry of, of, of sound and, 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 and uh, beautiful. It is beautiful. Did you ever clap for him that is beautiful? <laughs> And, and your offspring is working and you bring it into you becoming a little maybe older not gray yet but you already have a new generation who will continue yes. and the same thing with you you have your children working here in the ministry they grow not everybody likes that only those that are not Death and resurrected in Christ don't like it. If you are resurrected in Christ, you are happy to see a new generation. And when you become older, you say, oh, if this is a new generation, you do it. I support you. You understand? You will be happy with everything that God is doing in his body. You will speak about it. I love it. If you are not here, we would miss all the beautiful things. Then we need to pray and pray and seek and seek for another one like you. You have three apples here. <laughs> it's more more than in the blessing than heck. Yes. You see, if, if you leave your post, we, we had to go, uh, we went through some things with the Blessing Geneva too, it's no secret, uh, but we had to leave some of the ministry and music. Uh, it would be nice if more would, be, more, more would come, we can also use the drums and everything. We can, the body of Christ can grow. Amen. If you don't leave your post in the army, when you leave your post, it's a big sin. It's a no-no. If you leave your post in the army, your, your, your mates can be killed. So the first thing that Papa learned me is never leave your post, whatever. If you are angry, if you, if you don't agree, don't leave your post. God has given your post. He has chosen you. You didn't choose him. He chose you. He chose you and gave you the job. And then when you don't agree, don't say suddenly, yeah, but uh, David so, or uh, Brother Bong so, and uh, no, God gave you the post. Amen. So never leave your post. Always be on your post. It is a sin because you will weaken your body if you leave. It weakens the ministry. Okay, we will continue. The body will be coming strong again because God will take care of his body. So new people will come. 
but you still weaken the body if you talk evil. I'm not talking about the sickness as before. No, I'm talking about these things. You weaken the body when you leave your post. You weaken the body when you talk evil. When you say evil things that you break the body down instead of... I mean, break the body is a very easy thing to do. Every knot in the world, you can give a hammer and he breaks everything down. But to build is another thing. It takes courage, it takes... You know what it takes to build. Tear down is very easy, everybody can tear down. It weakens the body if you talk evil. If you don't do your, your, uh, your, your job in the body. You, you, you have a job in the body, if you don't do it, if you are not on time here, when you have to open it, then the whole body, all the church members cannot enter in. If the music is not ready, if you don't do your job and the music is ready, you cannot bring the body, the members of the body into worship into, for the Lord. So if you don't do your job, even to clean the toilets need to be cleaned. After the meeting, things need to be put back again. It's all a task that you have for the body of Christ. And Paul says, do it with a joy. If you don't do it, you weaken the body. You weaken the body by not being obedient. By being disobedient. You, you weaken the body if you are not willing. It's a very, you know what it is to have children that are not willing. Always against. Well, children in the church of Christ, if they are not willing, it weakens the body. It weakens the body if you fight among each other. Maybe not fighting with your fist, but it can be with your mouth. It weakens the body if you are, how you say that in English, uh, if you have your own mind. Hmm? Yeah, your own agenda, your own mind about things. If this is the way that the leader, if the pastor says it needs to go this way, no, we need to go do it that way. No, but I want it this way. Yeah, but I, I, this is better. You weaken the body if you do it your own way. You need to do it in the way that the leader above you, that God appointed above you, how he wants it, how she wants it. This is the first thing my father teaches me too. He says, David, if, if the boss wants that gray, if the boss wants that white, don't make it gray. Don't put a little black of your own into the white to make it gray. It's a, it's a very easy thing to learn and it's a very hard thing to learn. Just obey. If you obey in the little things, God can use you in the big things. If you don't obey your boss in the little things by doing it like he wants, then God can never use you for the big things because in the big things you will do the same. You will do it your own way. And that's what God doesn't want. That's why sometimes he can use someone who is maybe not that intelligent uh, he can use better than those very intelligent people that want to do it their own way. Sometimes there is a lot on stake for God. Like Job, you know, he said to Satan, did you see my, uh, my servant Job? You know, God said, did you see? Sometimes there's a lot in stake for God, which we don't know. That's why you need to do it exactly how God... Uh, how God wants you to do it. And if you learn that by obey, obeying very easily the one that put, God puts you above you, he knows that you will do it in the big things too that he gives you. He can make you, give you leadership. Well, you will weaken the body if you are pride. And if you don't give your money, if you don't tie, you weaken the body. We can do a lot more if you tie, if you give the money, if you give the offering, you are united with a big, worldwide ministry and we need money to spread the gospel Amen. nothing is for nothing you know Amen. it all costs money to spread the gospel well there are so many things in which you can weaken the body remember that every attack on the body of Christ is an attack on him himself you hear this 
every attack that is attempted by whoever is an attack on Jesus Christ himself because his body, we are his body. So if you attack your brother and sister, you attack him. If you speak evil about your brother and sister, you speak evil about him. If you put a knife in your brother or sister, you put a knife in the body of Christ. If you hurt me, or if you hurt Brother Bong or Sister Rowie, whatever you write, whatever you say, whatever you do among each other, you put a knife in him, you put a knife in the body of Christ. You hurt the body of Christ. And because many don't know the difference in the body of Christ, they don't understand this principle, they hurt the body of Christ, what they say, what they do, and what they write. If you are baptized with the Holy Spirit, no, let me say, if you are baptized in the death and resurrection of Christ, if you are baptized with the Holy Spirit, if you are assembled and united with the body of Christ, you will not do these things. You will not talk evil about your brothers and sisters. You will not talk evil about the pastors and the leaders or anyone. Because if you do, you, you, you hurt the body that you are part of. That's why I don't understand that there are always people in the body of Christ. They hurt the body of Christ, what they say, what they write, and what they do. And in the same time, on Sunday, they eat of that body and they drink of the wine. The same body they hurt. It cannot fit together. That's why Paul says... You cannot eat the bread and drink the wine and be in the same time hurting that body. Then God will hurt you. That's why so many are sick among in the body, he says. And people die before that time because of those things. You hurt the body with all these things. You weaken the body with all these things. And then in the same time, you eat the bread and drink the wine. But God knows the heart. Yeah. Amen. If we... I need a few more moments. I'm only here now. If we... We should not only rem remember not to do these things. No, I go a little bit further than that. We also need to give our time and energy and money to defend the body, to protect the body, to enjoy it. <clears throat> that goes a step further than just, just keep your mouth shut. You know, many times it's good to keep your mouth shut to these people and give them over to the hands of the Lord. But when they speak evil, write evil, do evil things, which will hurt the body of Christ, because it's wrong talking, it doesn't build, it breaks it down, then you go a little bit further, because then you, need, then you need to take your stand and protect the body that you are part of. You protect your own body too. You protect the body of your children. They are part of you. When someone else is harming your children, you will stand there, and you will defend your children. You will protect your children and do everything that no harm will come to your children. So that goes an, a step further. If you are a true Christian, if you are truly died and resurrected with Christ, if you are truly filled by the Holy Spirit, you will not just let it happen, you will defend it. You will protect it. And you will keep it in good health. You will keep the body in good, good health. How can we keep the body in good health? Well, be inspired by the Holy Spirit. Yes. Amen. You keep the spiritual body in good health. God can only use your gifts and talent through the Holy Spirit and not without the Holy Spirit. If he uses talents without the Holy Spirit, it's just naturally talent. The world is full of natural talent. But God cannot use it. 
He can only use it by the Holy Spirit because the Holy Spirit will do what He wants and not what you want. If you are not dead and resurrected, it's your own by which you play nice or, or sing or worship or do your test. Well, God cannot use it. He can use someone who is maybe not so talented much more and do much more things to those very uh, to those that are maybe not so talented than using all the greatest talents of the world but not used by the Holy Spirit. Amen. That's why he can use those maybe not with great talents but you are you died and you were resurrected and the spirit of God lives it in you. Amen. You are his. He is you and, and, and he puts you in place. He chose you and he says I will do it through you. I, let me use it by, by serving in the Holy Spirit. It doesn't mean that uh, uh, it's only by the pastor. It's by every member who serves in the Spirit that you can keep the body healthy. And by giving space and room to the very different talents that are in church. And I always like that. I give a lot of space and room, especially among young people. And yes, they do make mistakes. They do do it sometimes like it should not be. But they, they have the best school there is. They, they can learn and, and learn of their mistakes and faults. But we give them space. We give them room. Let them, let them try. Let them work. And they can learn to work with the Holy Spirit. Everybody needs to learn. Everybody, you will never do it like this. You need to pray so you can you can learn how to pray. You need to, to worship so you can learn how to worship. Everybody learns along the way. So we give space. And then sometimes we need to correct. Well, i rather have someone that is going, going, and making mistakes, but that I can correct if they let themselves correct, then someone that doesn't do anything. I, I rather have a horse that's, that's like this than a donkey that is sitting on his... You understand? So we give room. We give space to those. Well, we are all unique because God makes us unique. You don't want to be a copy of someone else. I am not my father. You know, in the beginning when I took over 25 years, I had members that, that said, but David, your father did it so. Your father so. Your father so. And I thought, I am not my father. I have my own anointing. You are unique. Yes, I've learned a lot of things about my father. And I work in that same line of word and anointing and spirit. But I'm still unique. You are unique. God can use you in the body of Christ with your talents as long as you do it by the Holy Spirit. Amen. And so today I wanted to explain to you the Holy Spirit in the body of Christ. What the body of Christ is. What the church is. And it's up to you if you belong to the true church of Christ. If not, if, if you are not then you need to die too. It's very simple. You need to die. And when you die in Him, the Holy Spirit will give the force to, to resurrect you in Jesus Christ. And that's when you, you go to the baptism in water. Why? To, to, uh, it's an outward symbolic thing of what happens spiritually. When you baptized in water, you die with Christ in water. You leave your old lives there. You come up, be resurrected with Christ, and you stand up in a new life. Amen. And then it should change. And the Holy Spirit should change you. So that you will do what God wants you to do. So remember, when things happening in church, and this is all over the world, it's the same thing. Remember. Remember. The body of Christ. Don't hurt it. Protect it. Protect it. Guard it. Be united. If something makes you go out, then don't listen. If there are mails, if there are letters, if there are whatever, 
Don't listen to it. Don't read it. It answers, it enters your heart and its seed. It will grow and it will divide more and you will affect other body members. You hear this? You will affect, that's why Paul speaks about like a cancer, some words and some works of the enemy works through one part to another part to another part and it stops when you don't read it when you don't listen to it and I can only encourage you to do so and I've done the same thing when when it comes to me or my family my children we have the same and it comes very quickly by the media today it comes in a second to you well if you are truly filled by the Holy Spirit, you will sense by the Holy Spirit in the first line that it's not of God. And when you sense by the Holy Spirit it is not of God, then quickly delete. Don't read because, oh, I want to know what it says. Once you read it, you can get rid of it. And it starts to grow and it brings you in rebelly. It brings you in the same spirit as those that write things and do things to break the body down. Read things with each other that builds the body, that unites the body, that wants to go forward and disconnect with everything and anything that divides and breaks the body down. That's what you need to do. Then you will see that the body will grow, be strong, nothing can harm it. It's his body. He will protect it. He will guide it. He will lead it. Oh, Lord, I thank you so much. I thank you so much for your word, the revelation of the Holy Spirit of this word, that we will do everything to protect and to build your body through the Holy Spirit that is within us. And if there are people here that are not joined in the true body of Christ and live still so much their own life, I pray that your Holy Spirit will reveal sin and justice and that we will, that we will go on our knees and ask the Lord for forgiveness. If we have done and took a wrong step, if we have read or we have joined, let what is breaking the body down, that we will take the decision today because the Holy Spirit is speaking to you today and warning others. And He's speaking to you today to make your decision and say, oh God, forgive me that I have hurted your body. I don't want to be a demonstrator of your body. I want to be a builder of your body. I want this body to be strong. It's your body, your sheep, your work. I want to be part of it. I long for it through the Holy Spirit that is within me. And I thank you, Jesus, that you opened my eyes by this message so I can change things in my mind and change things in my life. I want to obey you. I want to hear you. I want to follow you. Oh, I thank you, Lord, that you will use the blessing Geneva for a special assignment in, in this world to be a light in the darkness, to be united and to be one and to be strong, to come against the true enemy, which is the Satan and all his, uh, all his workers. Oh, that we come against it that wants to divide us, that we come against those that want to destroy the church. Yes, all these spirits that are used by the enemy, Father, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, we break all these evil spirits to let go of our family, of our children, of our husband, wife. Father, we pray for a jubilee breakthrough blessing in this place. We pray for a jubilee blessing, Lord, in our family, in our marriage, that my husband, my wife, my children will serve the Lord. And that this body will be strong and united and are joined one together with Christ our head. Oh, that we will obey you and everything you want us to do and say and go. I thank you, Lord, in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Thank you.
I give the mic to Brother Bob. Thank you, Pastor David. Praise the Lord. That's why we need the Holy Spirit in our lives. Amen. Hallelujah. So that we can grow. Because we, He is the one who brings us together. Hallelujah. Praise God. So we will be taking our second offering. And then afterwards, we will be closing in prayer. And then we will have food fellowship. And then after that, we will have a time with Pastor David. Praise God. Oh, sorry. Praise God. Shall we bow down our heads? And pray, Father, we thank you, Lord God. We thank you for your word. It is alive and active and sharper than any two-edged sword. And we thank you, God. We pray, Lord, that you will continue to speak to us and bless us, Lord. And Lord, as we give to you, Lord God, to support your work here, Lord, bless us, O God. We give you the glory and the honor in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank you for the new people, the first offering, go ahead. The first offering is always to spread the gospel, to, to join in the big ministry. The second offering is for our own taking, you know, the rent and everything that we use. And this is very good to know because this costs money. And every, I believe that every uh, blessing church first should pay their, pay their own expenses and then also be part of the big ministry to spend for the spreading of the gospel and saving the souls. So that's why we have two offerings, and it's good to have it that way. So we need to take care of ourselves as a man, as a church here, and we need to partake of the ministry to spread the gospel. That's why we, that's why we have two. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Okay, so uh, now we will be, um, before we close in prayer, uh, announcements. Ah, okay, so let's flash the announcements first, because we haven't done that yet. So we'll flash the announcements. So please take note, if you see your names there, please take note of your names, and then uh, come early, as Pastor David said, uh, and uh, be here, and let's uh, uh, do your part. Uh, stick to your posts and uh, let's serve the Lord together. Amen. Oh yeah, next Sunday we will have uh, Brother Jaconia to, to uh, share the Word of God with us. He will be coming on Friday and uh, he will be joining us in our prayer, prayer meeting at 7.30 in the evening and then on Saturday he will be the one uh, sharing the Word with, uh, with the Point Geneva. So that's the, our young people. So if you have young people in your family, we encourage you to, uh, to tell them to come and join the young people at our place. Uh, that's 11.30 in the morning, every Saturday at our place, number 17, Rue Ferrier. All right? Okay. So long. Right, so shall we all stand up? And we will close in prayer. For the birthday celebrants, we will uh, we will do the greeting this Sunday. Praise God. So shall we shall we bow down our heads and pray? Our Father, our God, we thank you for your presence. We thank you, Lord God, for moving mightily in our midst. We thank you for your word. We pray, O oh God, that you will continue to bless us, Lord. That throughout this week, Lord God, you will continue to speak to us. Guide us with your Holy Spirit, Lord, that you will teach us, Lord God, to rely more and more upon you, Lord God, to allow the Holy Spirit to move in our lives, Lord, so that more of you will be seen in us and less of us, Lord God, will be seen by people, that when people look at our lives, they will, they will see Jesus. They will see the love of Jesus. They will see the life of Jesus in us, oh God. Bless us, Lord God, so that we may be your light in this world, the salt of the earth, Lord. Father, we thank you. Now may the love of God the Father, the grace of His Son, Jesus, and the communion and guidance of the Holy Spirit be with us until He comes again. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. God bless you. So we will have food fellowship on the other side, and then afterwards we will come back and we will have our question and answer time with Pastor David. Yes, <laughs> <laughs>